Hi guys, welcome to m and Made Simple. I'm your host, Coach Alexander. I'm so happy that you've joined me today. We're gonna to be talking about mastering the monitoring and evaluation cycle. What are the best practices? So if you are new to this channel, please do not hesitate to subscribe because on a regular basis, I post updates in relation to monitoring and evaluation. So for those of you who are totally new, I'm so happy that you've joined this channel. It's called m and Made Simple. I'm Coach Alexander. I've been in m and for over 10 years now, and I've been advising a number of professionals and organizations on how to implement m and in their activities. So if you have any question, please do not hesitate to write to me. Now, there's something I want to talk about that's going to be happening in August to September. I'm organizing a four-week training, and this training is meant to help boost your skills. Have you ever noticed that, have you ever wondered rather that a lot of times we'll go to school to practice, uh, to learn monitoring and evaluation, but then at the job, we seem to be lacking behind. And this has been a complaint with, from a number of employers. So this training is meant to make you become hands-on in the way you do m and activities in your organization. So please register in the link below so that you get a, a seat reserved. It's only $50, but you don't pay immediately. We'll send you the link soon on where to make payments of only $50 for the next four weeks in, in uh, August. Okay, so let's get straight to business. Monitoring and evaluation is basically an activity that involves tracking the progress of projects and taking corrective action. So the definition you see before you is plain basic, but we all know that there are a lot of things that that happen when we're doing m and activities. There's not just the tracking component, but there's the issue of identifying the challenges, resolving those challenges, making sure that you achieve your targets, analyzing why you're underachieving, how you can best improve effectiveness, how you can improve efficiency, sustainability, and all those aspects falls into m and And for you to have an, um, a powerful m and mechanism, you need to have a strong, robust m and system. Now, the objectives of this presentation is basically five, okay? I want you to, first of all, get to understand m and which I have already explained. Explain the cycle, the m and cycle, highlight the best practices, identify common challenges, and encourage continuous improvement. So this is the, the presentation that I have before, before you. But I must mention that there are going to be three additional ones that I'll be posting on a weekly basis. I really want you to be following through because those presentations will enhance your understanding of the m and cycle. Okay, so please watch this video to the end. Uh, if you are a bit bored, you can skip some slides. There's no harm. Just uh, make sure that you finish this video so that you derive all the necessary points. Okay, so the m and that we all know, guys, is depicted in this picture. So the issue is this. When you sit down as an individual or as an organization, there are certainly plans that you make. So at individual level, you may be planning to buy yourself an expensive car. You might be planning to get yourself a house. For those of you who are not married yet, you may be planning to get married. So that is your plan. But the reality, unfortunately, is far different from the plan. As you have seen, in many cases, whatever we plan, even when we reach our destination, to reach that destination sometimes, is full of challenges and even heartbreaks. So the thing is that m and helps you resolve those challenges. So even if you have to go through a number of obstacles in your 
endeavor to reach your target. The monitoring and evaluation system is there to help you remain on track. So for, take for example, if you are not able to buy your car within the stipulated time, the question is why? So the m and system is going to help you resolve that challenge because once it answers that why question, it will give you the solutions on how best to raise the necessary resources to buy the car that you want. So m and has noticeable differences. While it is seen as one word, M and E, there is definitely two different dimensions to it. You've got the monitoring, you've got the evaluation. So the differences between the two are pretty much straightforward. Monitoring is continuous. It is done throughout the year. Evaluation, on the other hand, is not continuous, it's done at certain points in time. Monitoring usually aims to measure the activities. But when it comes to evaluation, on the contrary, it's, uh, it's usually designed to measure long-term results. So how, what do I mean when I talk about results? You've heard a lot of times in uh, social media or on international platforms, people saying, we need to see impact. We need to see this project making a difference. So evaluation measures that. It measures whether indeed so this project is making a difference, whether it is registering the impact that we want to see. But it just doesn't go on the impact it also measures the effectiveness, the sustainability, the efficiency, and so on. Now, when it comes to monitoring, usually you have staff of the internal, the, the, I mean, of the, the internal agency, so to put it. So internal staff in the agency, basically. But when you have the evaluation, usually you get external people. And for obvious reasons, you want to have the assessment as objective as possible. So you don't want biasness to come into play when it comes to uh, defining whether the project was successful or not. Uh, the source documents for monitoring are usually the documents inside the organization. For evaluation, they use both internal and external documentation in order to best have a understanding, an accurate understanding of what has changed, what has improved, what is lacking behind, and so on and so forth. The question is who uses these results? So for the monitoring, whatever reports are generated in, generated in the monitoring part of things, the results are used by the project management team, by the implementers themselves. They are the ones more interested in those results. But when it comes to the evaluation, the results, the evaluation report is usually useful to both the project management team and the donors around and other stakeholders. Now, Let's talk of the key components of m and First of all, you must def clearly define what it is you plan to do as a project. Remember in that initial slide, I showed you a picture of plan versus reality. So the issue is you need to clearly define what it is you want to achieve for you to monitor your achievements. Then another thing is you need to have key performance indicators. Key performance indicators are those uh, means of measuring what you are doing, whether you've uh, achieved your targets or not. Another issue is the baseline data. I always talk about this because I know how important it is. So baseline data is what 
is data that is um, that is measured before the project begins. It's basically saying how were things before you started the implementation. How were things before? That's your baseline data. So take for example. If you are trying to improve the lives of people in a community, the baseline data you are going to rely on is the data that tells you how these community members were living before the project began. Then the appropriate methods and tools for data collection are the instruments that you use to undertake the data gathering exercise. You've got the evaluation plan. So this evaluation plan is usually done at the point when the evaluation is going to start. Okay, there are two sides to it. There's the evaluation plan that details when you're going to do the different types of evaluations. But then you've got the other one, which uh, when you're actually doing the evaluation, when you're actually conducted it, conducting it, it details what activities you do and when they'll be completed. Another component is the establishment of systems for data storage, mechanisms for feedback from stakeholders, M&D findings to inform decision-making staff and stakeholder training and resource allocation. So this resource allocation, guys, get it from me, you mustn't ignore it. It's very important because you cannot run an M&D system without having resources. Now let's talk about the M&D cycle. The M&D cycle is depicted right in front of you. It involves three main stages. You've got the planning, you've got the monitoring, and then you've got the evaluation. So now let's talk about the circles, the yellow circles that you see within. In the planning stage, you are supposed to set targets. Remember last time I talked about whatever you've planned has certain targets you want to achieve. So for example, I talked about you planning to buy a brand new car in the next five years. That is your target. So when you set these targets, you're doing it at the planning stage. Then the next thing you should do at planning, and I like that this thing has been brought out in the M&D cycle. If you look there, it talks about, about scenarios, exant evaluation. So the exant evaluation is basically the baseline. So you need to do the baseline survey before you start implementing activities because before you start implementing project activities you want to know how the situation was prior to the project commencing then afterwards the next thing is the monitoring so monitoring now comes in where your project staff who are uh, uh, who are empowered with the duties of going in the field to track how the project is progressing this is the stage they must go out there and get uh, the data now remember the monitoring is done throughout the year so usually this monitoring from past experience will happen on a quarterly basis so your, your staff members will be generating reports to you. Assuming, I'm assuming you are in the project management team. They'll be generating reports to you and you'll be using that uh, report to make informed decisions. Then after the monitoring has been done, let's say the project is three years and you've been doing monitoring for, for three years, the ex post evaluation will now be commissioned. Okay, so the, the, if this evaluation uh, takes place at the end of the three years, but what other organizations have opted to do is to have it done maybe three months before because they do not want to disrupt the funding, the funding cycle. 
Okay, get it from me. Uh, and you know, people are, are very strategic on this. Other organizations may have what is known as a bridging year. Okay, a bridging year is a, a year when um, there's no project happening, but uh, people's salaries are being paid. Um, the other activities like um, reviewing of the project evaluation report is done, designing of the new project is being done. That is what they call the bridging year. So some donors allow for that, but others would rather they do the evaluation three months before, so that when the report is done, that report will be presented to the funders and then they'll be given a green light to enter the next phase. Oh yes, uh, just to remind you guys, in case you haven't registered, please don't hesitate to register for this training. Remember the registration is free, but there'll come a point when for you to begin the training, you need to make a, pay a payment of $50. So please just uh, secure your spot by registering in the link below. Okay, so I want you guys to join me next week to understand the m and cycle in more detail. Remember, this is going to be, this uh, m and cycle discussion will be happening for the next three weeks. So please be sure to tune in next week uh, to join me for the next discussion on the cycle. I've been your host, Coach Alexander. Until we meet again, see you on the other side. Bye.